We're going to focus on how the savings and investments gap in Australia can have an effect on the government's goal of external stability. Now, what this means is that savings, there is a gap between savings and our investment. And necessarily means national savings here is less than the investment expenditure businesses wish to undertake. So in a closed economy, because savings or national savings should equal investment, it means that businesses can only invest as much as people are saving. And this is only in a closed economy. So there is no external sector. But in an external sector, national savings does not necessarily have to equal investment. This is in an open economy. And why this is the case is because people or businesses can borrow from overseas. So we're going to look at how a net how net capital inflow can add to domestic savings. So we're going to analyze this by using a graph. Okay, so this graph is the level of real interest rate or R, mapped against domestic savings plus investments. Okay. So now, the upward sloping curve is usually the supply curve, but in this case, the supply curve is actually the supply of money in the economy, which is also denoted as national savings, or NS. Now, the downward sloping curve, which is usually the demand curve, is in fact investment because investments or businesses demand national savings so that they can invest. So as we can see here, at this equilibrium point, at RE, at this real interest rate point, national savings would equal investment. And therefore, there is an equilibrium reach at this investment point here. However, in the real world, this is not necessarily the case. And especially in Australia, we can see that the real interest rate is often lower than equilibrium. So we have a real interest rate at R0. And what this means is national savings is at this point, and investment is here. Now, as we can see, in Australia, national savings is less than investment which is denoted by here in this graph. So to make up the necessary investment at this point here, businesses can attempt to borrow overseas. And this is what makes up this gap here. This is borrowing from overseas. And we can look at this in two ways on how this can affect external stability. And we're going to primarily focus on the current account deficit because this is it is one of the major components of the achievement of external stability. So when they borrow from overseas, necessarily this means more interest repayments. And as we know, interest repayments are recorded in the primary incomes account of the current account and therefore because it is recorded as a debit that would cause this deficit to occur and therefore a movement away from external stability so that's one way you can look at how the savings investment gap can affect external stability another way you can look at is is a very mathematical way so we know that aggregate demand is equal to C plus I'm going to use the box here. C plus I plus G plus net exports. And net exports, as we know, is just exports minus imports. We're just going to denote it NX for simplicity. And what we also know is that GDP is also calculated. So GDP can be calculated by income, which is Y, which is, should be the same as 
of the aggregate demand in an economy. And since we know that aggregate demand equals income, we can rewrite this equation as y equals c plus i plus g plus nx. And if we rearrange this equation to make net exports the subject, because as we know, net exports relates to the balance on goods and services. If we make net exports the subject, we can see that net exports equals Y or aggregate demand minus C minus I minus G. That's just moving everything across this way. On a side note, we know that net national savings is everything that we don't spend. And since income is Y, that's our total income, we're going to take away consumption spending and we're going to take away government spending as well because that's everything that's being consumed or spent in the economy. So we consume consumption where we consume what we don't have or what we have of our income and then we, we're taxed and the government's going to spend all our tax. And so what's left over from income here, or total income, minus what we're spending in consumption, minus what we're going to be taxed and therefore spent by the government, we're going to be left with the savings that we haven't spent. So we can see that national savings equals Y minus C minus G. And if we replace national savings uh, in place of Y minus C minus G, we can see that net exports in fact equals national savings, so Y minus C minus G minus investment spending. Okay, so net exports equals national savings minus investment spending uh, using this mathematical formula here. So what this means is that when national savings is less than investment as per this savings investment gap here, this means that this number is necessarily a negative number because if you have a small number being taken away from a bigger number, sorry, a bigger number taken away from a smaller number, then we can see that the answer must be negative. So as a working example, say national savings is $100 and investment is $120, we can see that 100 minus 120 equals negative 20. So that's net exports. So that means we're importing more that there we're imp that there were we're exporting. So that's all very theoretical. If we look at a very um, practical example, we can see that a country with low savings rate means that households, businesses, and the government sectors are spending a lot of money relative to their income. And what this means is because we're spending a lot of money, of course, a lot of that money would go into imports. And so that necessarily means that imports will be greater than exports because we're consuming so much. We only have so much exports or so, so much production that we can export to overseas countries. If we say we have 100 uh, units of goods and services that we are willing to export, if we're willing, so we have 100 goods and services we're willing to export. If we're, if we're consuming, say, 90 of those units, then we only have... 10 left to export. We only have 10 units left to export. And if we have more money to spend on imports, if we want to spend another 20 units on imports to satisfy all our needs and wants from our income, then necessarily this means 10 minus 20 equals negative 10. This necessarily means that our net exports is negative. And so that means because our net exports is recorded as a balance of goods and services in the current account, this means that the current account would again fall into deficit. So in Australia, when there is a savings investment gap, it means that there is a movement away from external stability for two reasons. Firstly, that because we're borrowing from overseas, we require more interest repayments back overseas, and therefore recorded in the primary incomes as a net debit of the current account and secondly because national savings is less than investment this necessarily means that we are importing more than we are exporting and therefore again a debit 
in the balance on goods and services and therefore by extension we would experience an increase in our current account deficit an indicator that we are moving away from external stability if it is not at around the government accepted level of three to four percent GDP so that's the lecture on how the savings and investments gap can affect our external stability